Hey everyone, I just wanted to post this video and see if anyone else out there is seeing the same thing that I am with the maple trees. And let me know if you know what's causing it. A few years ago I posted a video when I was harvesting my firewood and I expressed my concern about how fast the trees were dying off. Lots of people suggested that I get the state to come out and look at it, which I did of course. And then we went to another piece of property and looked at all the degradation and their answer was, I don't know. So whether or not they know or just don't want to tell me something, I don't really know. But they never said to me that my property was overgrown, or that it was too wet, it was too dry, or for any other reason than I don't know. Okay, I've been kicking around the woods my whole life and I know what natural degradation is. When the trees are dying off naturally, I know what that rate normally would be. Not when you go to an area and you cut it, cut all the standing dead and you go back the next year and there's just dozens and dozens of trees in the same spot. So a lot of people chimed in that went to forestry school and they're across the country and they'll tell me my forest was overgrown maybe some sections where I was standing where I was filming might have been a little bit too heavily forested that might have a little bit to do with it but I could take you out in hedgerows between my fields and not fields that are sprayed with Roundup or anything like that where the tree death was just as rapid and it's not overgrown there the foresters would have told me so anyway when all of that was happening I noticed that in the 300 mile drive between my two cabins, the, the, the scenery was changing rapidly. Trees were dying off of all species. That 300 mile drive, I'm telling you, was turning more and more brown every year. You look at the hillsides everywhere, you can just see them. Trees dying everywhere. So it was really alarming. So at that time, about four years ago, when I was here in New Hampshire, I started documenting what the tree uh, health was in a certain section. I would walk that section every single day and I would write down and on that first year there was one maple that had recently gone bare and a few that were thinning out. They were looking sickly. Aside from the canopy you would never know it but if you look up at the canopy the leaves were tiny like a birch tree instead of the big maple leaves and they were falling to the ground in the summer while they were green. The wind would blow, leaves are falling just like it was in, the, in October. It's not right. Yeah. There's beech and maple, all different species everywhere. And there hasn't been any big winds or rains or anything. That ain't right. What's nature telling us anyway? Yeah? So I wrote down one tree gone bare, three were looking sickly. The very next summer, seven had gone bare. There was like a dozen that looked sickly. This is on the same walk every single day. And it just pr got progressively worse. Now, right here in this little section of woods where I'm standing, is where I go to get my water for the cabin. There were no unhealthy trees here four or five years ago. And, and then over the last few years, especially the last two summers, I see them just thinning out like crazy. The canopy, little tiny leaves falling, the canopy goes bare, the tree gets riddled with these mushrooms, game over, they're all dead. And right where I am standing right now, I want to reiterate, there were no unhealthy trees, not showing any signs of it, okay? And right where I'm standing right now, I have this one, one right here, there's two right there, there's a whole bunch over there. I can see a dozen maples right here that this has happened to. What I'm also noticing, maples, Naples are usually really strong where if I wanted a tree next to my house I'd want it to be a maple tree because I had little worry about them breaking off. It's really strong wood 
but the maple trees, even ones that aren't showing any signs of being sick, are snapping off like twigs, and I've been filming this over the last few years. After posting the video about the tree death, I received thousands upon thousands of letters with photos from people all over the world that were experiencing the same thing with the trees. Trees of all species all over the planet that were dying off at an alarming rate. There was a lot of information shared with me on the topic of geoengineering. If you don't know what that is, I will put information in the description below and you can look into it for yourself. Geoengineering is a method used to combat global warming, a method where they spray reflective heavy metal powders in the atmosphere to reflect the sun's rays back upward in an attempt to cool the planet. Apparently, scientists have forgotten that the planet Earth used to be covered with ice. Whenever I walk around out in the wilderness and I come across these enormous nuggets just sitting on the surface of the ground, those nuggets were deposited there by glaciers long, long time ago. Glaciers that have melted when the earth was warming. It's been warming ever since. I can totally understand the concern about the polar ice caps melting and all of the, the issues associated with that. I can understand that, but what I can't understand is spraying heavy metal powders in our atmosphere when it's a proven fact that heavy metals are toxic to human life. It's a proven fact that aluminum is a leading cause of Alzheimer's. So why is it neurological disorders like Alzheimer's, autism, Parkinson's, etc are spreading like wildfire when they are not contagious diseases. Why is that? You can look into the statistics. Those neurological disorders are spreading like wildfire. And if they're not contagious, why is it so? Now, I'm not going to tell you that the government is spraying anything. I'm not going to tell you that it is the cause of anything, and I'm not going to tell you that that is why all the forests are dying off all over the world. What I will do is post some information down below. You can look into it if you desire to. You can turn a blind eye to it, be in denial. It's your choice how you want to accept it or not accept it. What I'm doing here in this video is sharing my observations. And what I am observing is very, very alarming. I live in the forest. I live, I'm surrounded by miles of forest and I am in the forest every single day. And I am familiar with the forest that I live in. So that is why I am identifying the degradation of the forest. If this is the first time you have ever seen me, you would not have any idea if I've recently lost weight, recently gained weight, got a haircut, <laughs> you know, because you're unfamiliar with me. Same with when you look out over a crowd of people, everyone's out shopping or walking down Main Street, you would assume that they're all healthy. But if you knew a person that just recently lost weight or recently got sick or whatever, you would identify it because you are familiar with them. When I first talked about the trees dying off, people would comment, oh yeah, I, I see a few trees dead along the side of the highway, but that's from car exhaust. But they never take for a moment to consider that those are the only trees that they ever see anyway. 
they don't go out into the forest, and if they did and they saw some dead trees, it wouldn't be alarming to them because there's always been dead trees in the forest, but not at this rate. So if someone's going down the highway and they see a few dead trees, what they are seeing is the ratio of the trees dying behind those and behind those and behind those. I'm in the forest every day and the maples are dying off at an alarming rate. So I am not going to say the government is doing anything. I'm going to leave that up to you to decide. But what I will tell you, I have been seeing condensation trails behind jets all my life. Condensation trails that would evaporate. What I see now, there are occasions I see jets with no trail. Jets with a very short trail that disappears as fast as the jet does. And then there's the trails that never dissipate, they disperse. For the last few years, those deep blue skies with the white puffy clouds were few and far between. You would have a nice day with a blue sky, but before you know it, it was one jet trail after another after another. The, lot, the sky would become striped. Those jet trails would start to disperse. And before you know it, the, the whole sky is a murky, milky white. I'm not the only one observing this. Now, another thing that I am seeing, that after a heavy rain, out in the forest, the trees are dripping with suds, like as if they just came through a car wash. People write to me all the time with these observations. Next time you see a whole bunch of jet trails turning the sky milky white, pay attention. Within a couple of days, you will have rain. In most cases, that's what I'm observing here. Now again, I'm not telling you that the government is doing anything. I'm not telling you that what they're doing to combat global warming is killing off the forest or making autism and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's spread like wildfire. I'm just going to share my observations, share some information down below, and it's entirely your decision whether or not you want to look into it. Yeah. I love nature. A lot of the folks watching this video love nature. A lot of the folks watching this video have children who love nature. And the planet Earth is the only place your children have to live. You can turn a blind eye to it. That's entirely up to you. So that's all I wanted to do here today, my friends. Please share this video with your friends. All the best to you, and God bless. Frank and the boss out walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun Taking life a day at a time Best friends until the end Frankie and the Boss Frankie and the Boss Frankie and the Boss